Hi there, my name is Nick Georgiev. I'm representing Antelope Audio today and I'm here with Hannah from Abbey Road Institute. Hi, welcome to Angel Studios. This is the brand new home of Abbey Road Institute and I'm excited to show you around. So these used to be recording studios and then closed down and now it's taken over. What happened? What's the story? The building was actually originally a church and then was converted into a recording studio in the early 80s. Very sadly, the studio actually closed just towards the end of 2019. We were actually looking to expand our London Institute mm. um, and needed big premises outside of Abbey Road Studios and this came up. We really couldn't ask for a better location to have a music production and sound engineering school. So we took over the building last summer and then opened up and we've had our commercial studio open this year. That's one fantastic classroom. Did you say that this used to be part of the studio? Yeah, so this was part of Studio 3. You kind of get a feeling for it, where if you see the wooden panelling here, we put the ceiling there as well. And then just up behind us is the projection booth as well. Mm -hmm. So that's where you would have had the obviously film and TV projected down onto the wall at the back. And this is where our kind of day-to-day -day teaching happens for the Institute. So this is our dedicated studio for our students and they get access to it from term two and they have regular classes with Charlie. And um, Charlie, do you want to say a little bit about what's taking place at the moment? Yeah, so it's just our weekly studio lesson. I'm just kind of here as an observer, really. I give all the students a role every week to try and get it as real life as possible. So we have Tom's our producer, so we're working on his track and we're just doing some drums. And I think it's a good way they get real life kind of experience of the studio. Wow, so this is your Atmos room. I can imagine lots of good mixes happening here. This is our brand new Dolby Atmos suite. Before we were in what was Studio 3 in the live room, this is what was the control room of Studio 3 at Angel, and it was converted into our Atmos suite. We've got our Avid S6 console and our ATC speakers and 7.1.4 setup. It's used predominantly by our audio post-production for film and TV students. We work on a whole range of different projects in here, and actually outside of that course running, it's also available for computers shall hire as well. Okay, well that must be very popular at the moment with Atmos kicking off and a lot of people working from home I imagine and they need a proper environment where they can finish off their mixes. And so actually with the Galaxy unit you can connect this control room to the live rooms of other studios and that way record remotely even though the studios are not really close to each other and you, they could be recording sound effects there I say and while monitoring here working on some films. Yeah, absolutely. That's very cool. And actually with the new speaker management system in the Galaxy, you could be using it also for monitoring in atmosphere. Yeah, that's absolutely yeah. right. Wow, so it's very rare to see an entire organ in the live room of a studio. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, of course. So this is the Speechly pipe organ and the organ was an original feature of the church and obviously it's been kept as part of the studio. So there's an interesting story I heard from some of the guys that used to be part of the original Angel Studio team. There's lots of famous recordings that have happened here mm. over the years, but the music for Jaws 3 was recorded in this room and they supplemented the, you know the dun 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 yeah, yeah, in yeah, the Jaws yeah, film? Yeah, yeah. They supplemented the sound with recording from with the pipe organ. organ, so that is its claim to fame. But yeah, I mean, this studio has been home to so many recordings over the years. Like the studio opened in the early 80s and it hosted The Cure, Susie and the Banshees, then had recordings right through until 2019 when the studio closed. Other than the really big room, you've got lots of booths here uh, for separation. I mean, we haven't really made any kind of structural changes to this studio. I mean, partly as well because the building is listed, but we've kept the booths as they were. Oh, wow. Oh, it's been a while. <laughs> That's a lovely studio, huh? Yeah, it really is. So this is actually the original console that was in the studio before Angel closed towards the end of 2019. So it's a 60-channel Neve 88RS. I mean, we've had a number of um, orchestral sessions in here since we've re reopened. Um, we've had clients in like Tony Visconti, we had um, Sam Smith I think just after we reopened. So yeah, we've got lots of like really interesting projects coming in at the moment. 
and then you've got also the antelope gear over there for Absolutely. 96 inputs and outputs. You can run some really big sessions here. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And you should also chat with my colleague Luca as well, who knows the ins and outs of all the kind of technical setup of the studio and can kind of give you more insight into that as well. That would be great. In Studio One, with an old friend of mine, Luca, who was heavily involved in the restoration of the studios, uh, from what I hear, and uh, maybe you can tell us a little bit more about the way uh, using the Galaxy interfaces. Yeah, of course. So we were able to integrate the atomic clock driving the Galaxy 64 and the Galaxy 32 in such a way that we could cater for what really normally you need in a studio of this kind, which is flexibility. Every engineer will come and will have their expectations because they're used to work in a specific way. And so we needed to have something that could really be flexible and easy to configure depending on the needs. We have a 60 channel console and with the Galaxy 64 and 32, obviously you can have a total of 96 input and outputs but quite commonly in this kind of projects that we record here, you will be expected to have a separate playback rig. So very often you will have pre-recorded tracks and the video that needs to be used and displayed during the session for the conductor and for the production team. So a dedicated computer next to the main recording computer. The way we have the interfaces set up is so that the Galaxy 64 is connected to the primary computer, the recording rig. But to increase the track input and outputs, we also use the Galaxy 32. So if I understand correctly, the Galaxy 64 communicates with Pro Tools over the HD ports. Yes. How is the second Galaxy connected to the first one? The very specific and unique aspect of this configuration is that the Galaxy 32 is actually being split and the first 16 inputs are connected via MADI to the Galaxy 64, while the second 16 are connected via Thunderbolt to a separate computer, the Mac Mini. And this is quite useful and has proven to be something that pretty much is used in every single session. The interesting thing is that if we really need to, we can actually have up to 96 converters working all together with the record rig, because we can go 32 and 64 all working together. Thanks everyone for watching and Hannah, thank you so much for showing us around. Thank you and thank you for joining us. <laughs>